This is Dr. Kavanaugh of Associates of South Texas. I'm going to show you a multifocal lens implant that we placed after cataract surgery. This is a routine cataract case. You can see the patient has cortical nuclear sclerotic and posterior subcapsular cataract. We made our normal superior side port incision with 15 degree blade. and We're going to use a 2.8 millimeter keratome to make our main incision. Uh, you can see that we're going to inject in viscoelastic. That's the gel-like substance that keeps space in the eye as we operate, protecting the delicate structures of the cornea from effects of trauma from surgery. We're going to perform a capsulorexis using a standard capsulorexis forcep and see that we make a capsulorexis. That's a tear into the anterior capsule, and we keep it about 5 millimeters for a multifocal lens implant. We'd like to completely surround the edges of the optic, which is six millimeters, with uh, a capsule to keep the lens in good position. You can see we've hydrodissected, injected BSS behind the cataract to free it up, and we've made sure the capsular uh, connections to the lens are broken. We s easily were able to spin the cataract inside the capsular bag. We're now using an Akihoshi pre-chopper to break the cataract up into four pieces. And we do this quite easily. The nucleus is probably of a moderate density, approximately two to three plus, as we grade it out of four. We're going to suck out each of the individual pieces of the cataract with a phaco emulsifier handpiece. You can see it's a little needle there uh, um, at the end of the handpiece that has uh, aspiration and that sucks in the cataract and the little needle vibrates at 20 to 40,000 times a second breaking up the cataract uh, into a semi-liquid state that's able to be sucked out of the eye through that small incision. BSS or balanced salt solution is also being placed in the eye uh, around that blue sleeve around the needle uh, and that keeps the eye formed as the pieces of the cataract are being removed. You can see the cataract was very easily evacuated out of the eye in less than probably 30 seconds and we're left with the cortex. That's the material that is more firmly adherent to the capsular bag where the cataract used to sit. We'll remove this with an automation, automatic uh, irrigation aspiration handpiece and you can see we're moving the cortex in a circumferential fashion from the outside in using uh, this irrigation aspiration handpiece. Some of the pieces of the posterior subcapsular cataract are more firmly adherent to the capsule and we'll use a uh, cannula with balanced salt solution uh, on a 3cc syringe to remove these using kind of a power washing method that I found to be very atraumatic for the capsule and safe. We are removing the subincisional cortex uh, with the automated irrigation aspiration handpiece and once we've completed this we will use the balanced salt solution on the 27 gauge cannula to power wash off these resistant pieces of posterior subcapsular cataract and cortical material. And this is a very fast, easy way to remove this with little risk of rupture of the posterior capsule. Having used this technique in the last 2,000 cases, I have never ruptured a capsule with a 27 gauge blunt cannula. Once these attachments have been removed, we inject further viscoelastic uh, to keep space in the anterior chamber and fill the capsular bag. We're going to inject uh, through the main incision on a uh, Monarch injector, a C cartridge it's called, a uh, Technus multifocal lens uh, into the capsular bag. Uh, this is a diffractive optic multifocal lens that I found to be excellent for distance, near, and intermediate vision in patients we've implanted this lens into. You can see the lens is unfolding. These acrylic lenses unfold slower than the silicone lenses you'll see in my other cataract cases. Uh, and this material uh, has a more controlled unfolding and we're helping that lens unfold with two instruments uh, flattening the lens out from its assumed position that it got sitting in the little injector cartridge 
while we were doing the case. You can see the lens is already centering well. We're hydrodissecting, or I'm sorry, hydrating the uh, clear cornea wounds uh, to seal them, uh, make them thicker and less resistant to leakage. And we're going to remove the viscoelastic from the eye with the automatic uh, irrigation aspiration handpiece. And we're going to center the lens with the irrigation aspiration handpiece and remove all the remaining viscoelastic. This will prevent intraocular pressure spikes after surgery, as uh, leaving this in the eye can lead to high pressure after surgery is completed. We're now going to get the patient to uh, direct their attention to the three lights on the microscope and get them to look right in between all three of those three bright dots on the cornea and this will help us center his intraocular lens using a 27 gauge cannula. Once the patient is fixated on these three light sources of the microscope we make sure that they're well centered and in this case you can see the three microscope lights were right on the pupillary axes and at the center of the intraocular lens. Thank you for your attention. This is Dr. Kavanaugh by Associates of South Texas.